Hello, Tammy Poff here, owner of Poff Studio, a weaving and painting gallery in Bellevue, Florida. Over the last few years, I've had the distinct privilege of working with a great many talented new weavers to teach them how to work on the rigid head of loom. I have to show you today a really easy method to remove your project. It comes as a conglomeration of all the suggestions I've gotten from these wonderful students. Here we go. First of all, you'll want to gather some type of measuring tape, a roll of tape, scotch tape, masking tape, repositionable tape, works fine, or, and a pair of scissors. So I always like to be sure to check that I have measured the right length for my fabric before I get real serious about removing it from the loom. Here's how you would do that. It's fine to pull the fabric off the front once it's woven. And I have used a method to keep track of length here. One of my favorites, I call it the disappearing pins. I've counted out seven pins and placed them at five inch intervals because I want to weave 35 and a half inches. So I should be able to count seven pins and they should be five inches apart. And then I have another half inch beyond that and I'm done. So let's just double check. It's too easy to lose track of your measurement of your fabric. And when you cut it off the loom, it's too late to go back and check it. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins plus a half an inch. Now I can go ahead and wind my fabric back onto the front beam, reset the break, and just kind of guide it straight as it rolls forward. And you don't need a lot of tension, but just a little tension. I like to work with at least six inches of fringe when I tie tassels, or maybe you'll like seven or eight or more. Whatever you decide, I can measure and adjust my front and back ratchets so that I have my fringe length from the rigid heddle up to the fabric edge, in this case six inches, and then I will use the reed or the rigid heddle as a cutting guide. Now, I've already started this, but I've decided to use four strand tassels as I work my way across. By the way, once I've checked my fabric, I do tuck my last tail, and this particular strand, I like to trim it flush with the fabric, which I've already done, so that it doesn't confuse me and get in the way of my tassels. You will notice that I normally leave strands where I've added new yarn to be trimmed after the washing, so I only have to trim them one time as they shift during washing. So what we're going to continue to do as I work my way across is I will cut four strand tassels. And I'm going to leave my fourth strand there. I'm going to use an overhand knot to tie tassels. So I'll make a great big loop and I'm going to keep that loop large until I scoot it with both fingers right up against the woven edge to secure it. And you'll see that I'm cutting my tassels as I work across, only cutting the ones that I need for each tassel. Okay, here is my last four strand tassel. Once that is tied, that end is completely removed from the loom. So let's take the fabric off the front and work the other end. I actually have two pieces on this warp. They're both 35 and a half inches long. When I get all the way down to the knots, I just skim them right off the front rod, apron strings and all. I can replace those later. What I want to do now is focus on the beginning edge. 
And the first thing you'll do, of course, is pick out the original bows and knots that you placed. Okay, fast forward, and now I've picked out my last bow and half knot used to tie to the front beam. I want to lay the fabric on the work table, and here's where I use my tape. I'll be taping the fabric down to the table, and that helps tremendously to keep it from flopping around while I work front tassels. Now this is the point where I straighten out the fringe, and even though there's a little crimp in there, I like to cut my fringe now rather than after washing. Just a good time to do it. I never think of fringe as having to be absolutely perfect because even if I cut it perfect, it won't stay that way. It's fringe, it stretches, it unravels, it hangs. But I'm going to measure six inches from the good edge. The good edge, I have a dark green header here. I don't know if that comes through on the video, but the good edge is where the header ends and the good weaving begins. Six inches from my good edge, just above the header. And I'm going to place another piece of tape. This is where repositionable tape is nice to have. And I'm going to use the tape as a cutting guide to get an approximate six inch length on my fringe. And cut across. In this case I use the top edge of the tape. Then I can simply remove the excess, remove that tape. Now I've got to remove the header. And what I like to do, we used to say, well, just pull it out one line at a time. Well, that's a real pain in the neck if you try to do that, even if you keep cutting the header thread as you go. I have a more efficient way now. What I do is find a gap near the middle of the header, and I want to cut my header. Sometimes I'll just do one strand at a time, but the important thing is that you cut only weft and not the warp threads. In order to do that, what you'll want to do is lift up that weft thread so that you can see the scissor point and you can see just weft sitting on your scissor before you make the cut. If the point of the scissor emerges as you work, you'll know that's weft that you're cutting. Now, if you accidentally get in a hurry and cut a warp thread in the middle, it's not going to go anywhere. It's woven in. But I always say, why give it a haircut where it doesn't need one? So to be secure here, simply make sure that the scissor point lifts up with the weft sitting on top of the scissor blade. And I'm going to cut all the way up to the good fabric edge. My students know that I normally use a piece of cut up plastic kitchen garbage bag to separate header from the good edge. I didn't do that this time. So you may not be able to see where my header ends, but I can see it here on the work. Okay, the reason for cutting the header up the middle is now, and this is actually fun, you can go about a half inch to an inch in from the edge and simply pull header out two at a time without any stress. I love doing this. <laughs> Simple pleasures. All right, and I go all the way up till I get to the good edge. Be careful that you don't pull, that you don't get carried away and keep on pulling uh, yarn out so that you attack your good edge, your weaving edge. And then I would do the same on the other side. Simply hold the fabric down and pull header threads out two at a time. Okay, once that is done, you get the idea. I'll start at one edge. And again, my job is to tie four strand 
tassels. This is mohair, so they can be a little hard to separate. You can choose the number of strands that you think looks best for your tassels. And if you want to go a step further, you can make sure they divide out by the number of warp threads that you have. And you can see here when I tie big overhand loop and I scoop that loop right up against the woven edge before I let it tighten, that the tape has kept it from flopping around and it's a very simple task at this point. Once you work your way across and you tie your last tassel, you are done except for the washing. Hope that helps make the job a whole lot easier to remove your project from the loom. Happy weaving!